All right, guys, so I'm out here actually in Kentucky and behind me, I got my friend's uh, F-150. So he went with the, uh, the F-150 as opposed to my uh, F-350. And we're just gonna talk about that a little bit and he's gonna take us through uh, what he likes about it, what he doesn't like about it, what's nice about it and all that kind of stuff. So I thought this would be kind of cool uh, juxtaposed um, or put up against my, uh, my own truck to just kind of get an idea of the person that gets an F-150 versus, um, you know, an F-350 or an F-450 or F-550, whatever it is, kind of get their perspective. So that's what we're going to do here. Check it out. All right. So here's Dustin over here. And Dustin, tell us why you got this truck. I want to actually flip this around so I can see you and they can see you. And... Well, actually, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, guys. That is my new E350 <laughs> and the reason. Don't see this. Yeah, it's not there. <laughs> it's not there. But that's the reason why I am in Kentucky right now uh, is just I came from picking that up. But anyways, this is all about this F-150 and Dustin's F-150. And Dustin, I'm going to have you come over on this side, actually. Right. And then uh, so I've got an F-350. Why did you get an F-150? Oh, I'm definitely thinking because of fuel economy. <laughs> uh, this is actually a family truck. I'm a new time father. And uh, this is kind of fits the bill with all of our long trips, camping and all that type of stuff. So um, I definitely wanted to get a F-150 uh, just for that economy and uh, comfort. And what do you get? You say economy. What do you get for gas mileage? Uh, roughly, I've been... 22 to 25 on highway and then 2021 okay uh, just kind of around town and what engine is this this is the uh, 2.7 ecoboost let's let's look at it let's open it up yeah so 2.7 ecoboost all right are we going to be surprised is it going to be full of engine it's going to be lacking full of engine. <laughs> it's a pretty small engine, actually, but it's a high output engine. Okay. So I don't know the exact specs on it. We can probably look that up if we want to. But yeah. uh, I know it's upper upper 300s horsepower, mid... Which is not bad. Mid 400s, yeah. I think, for torque. Um, it is fun to drive. Okay. And that's the only reason I got the 2.7 was I've had one before, and it is... It's, peppy it's torquey um it'll put your head in the back of the seat when you actually really want to step on it yeah so let's actually talk about that you mentioned that you've had another one before mm -hmm. let's let's get an idea for the audience at home how many trucks have you had what kind of trucks have you had how many vehicles have you had just so we can get a baseline <laughs> when you're comparing this vehicle and saying it's torquey or it's whatever else not so people have an idea of what are you comparing it to so the direct comparison would be a 2015 XL uh, Super Crew F-150. Okay, so, and that's what you had before, right? That's what I had before. Okay. I did have a 2013 with the V8. Uh -huh. um, both those were with the six-speed transmission, though. This is with the 10-speed. Um, I find it to be much smoother than the six-speed, and I also find it to be those extra overdrives, I think, is what gets the better miles per gallon on the highway, to be honest. Do you remember the mileage in your uh, V8 or the... Uh, V8 was pretty consistently around 18, 19, and this is driving through, like, Kansas and Iowa, so, or, I guess, Nebraska and Iowa, so lots of winds and stuff. And that's probably my biggest complaint about this engine and the old truck, was that when you're on any type of side wind or headwind, that 24 on the highway would drop down to like somewhere between 16 and 18. Okay. Uh, it just, it didn't have enough gears to go through to really uh, yeah. keep up with that extra pressure. So the 10, 10 speeds made a big difference then? It has. I haven't noticed the difference driving around on windy days. It seems to be relatively okay. in the same ballpark. Have you towed it all with it yet? No, I have not. The only thing I've told you to see from the video is my mountain bike on a rack. Um, so how long have you actually had this? You just got this, right? Uh, two weeks now. Two, two whole weeks. Two whole weeks. And how was that experience of buying it? It was pretty good overall. I ordered this actually back in October, I believe like October 20th or 21st. Okay. Um, and just would do all the delays and chip shortages, obviously. Just It took a while. Yeah. Um, 
the dealership I went to was really cool. They stayed on top of it. Um, they you know, sent me, uh, gave me an email or a call every couple of weeks just to say if they've heard something or not. Um, the ordering process uh, through Ford was pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, if you do your research and you bug enough people on what decisions to make like I did, you actually <laughs> can help the salesman yeah. uh, through the process. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you go into the dealership, you order it, they put your order in, and then they give you a number of some sort, then you take that home? Yes. Okay. Uh, you get your, you put your deposit down and then, which truthfully in most Ford dealerships is about $500. It's actually not much to do. Yeah. It's totally refundable if you decide not to keep the vehicle. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you just, you basically get signed up through email. There's a link and you actually just go to Ford's website and you can track everything electronically through their website and it'll give you updates on when the build is supposed to happen, what part of the build your truck's in, when it's ready for shipping, and uh, eventually what date it should arrive at the dealership. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, let's start it up and hear this monster come to life. <laughs> you know, I think everybody is gonna be super excited to uh, to hear that. That's what everybody is waiting for. Yeah, they do. <laughs> All right, very quiet. How is it when you're driving? Is it loud in the cab? Is it? No, it's very quiet. Yeah. It uh, has more of a purr than a roar. You know, it's not it's not the 5.0. It's obviously not a diesel or anything. So yeah. if you're somebody who likes to hear your vehicle, I would say go with the 5.0 or something. <laughs> um, but again, I, I went back and forth on what to actually order. I almost got a power boost and then I was thinking about the 50 V8, and I just since I had this engine for three years, I just decided it was the best. Go cool with that. So this looks like it doesn't belong in here. What is this? That is a oil catch can. Okay. What is the deal with that? So there's sometimes there's some extra particulates that get out in the combustion process, and they're usually recycled back up into the intake manifold and uh, it normally just gets burnt off in there, but you can get some oil and some gunk built up. Oh, so that catches it. all that stuff. And so it catches all that. They said with the new model 2.7, they actually built that into the engine so it shouldn't happen as bad. Okay. But all the reviews I found said it's still a good thing to have. And it was a simple 15 minute process. You literally just unplug your hose, attach that to your battery case. And then these are just plug and play. You literally just connect them in and you're done. You're good to go. Okay, so not a bad install at all. Super no. quick. Super, super quick. All right. So uh, we're going to close this. And uh, earlier you were talking about louvers or something like that on the front of it. What yeah, is that so about? You actually can see that they are closed right now. So there's some automatic, I don't know if you call them gates or... Okay, so I can't see the radiator right now. Exactly. Okay. So what's happening is the engine is warming up. So it's keeping all that heat in and getting itself warm enough. If the engine needs to cool more, it will open those back up oh. and get some more air in there. Now so I, it's all automatic. I'm not sure when it does it, when it doesn't. No, I don't have that on my F-350. That's actually pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So very I cool. Think it's, I think it's only on Lariat models and above. And above. And maybe we should talk a little bit about the actual Lariat model that I ordered. Okay, so that's what you have here and that's what we're looking at, that's right? That's what we're looking at. We're looking at the Lariat. And why a Lariat? Uh, I like leather seats and I also wanted the four-wheel automatic. Okay. I mean, that, that both starts with the Lariat model. All right. So the model before this is the what then? The S XLT? XLT. Okay. Yeah. And that doesn't have leather? It does not have leather. And you can't get it as an option? I do not think so. Okay. Um, the XLT, their 302A high package, has almost everything this truck has, except for the four-wheel auto and the leather seats. Okay. Let's take a look at the inside then, yeah. see what this leather looks like. We'll probably turn it off too while we're at it. So, this is the inside. What do you like about it? Looks like there's some kind of baby situation going on back there. <laughs> there that is my baby's uh, base attachment, yes. Um, I love the roominess. Okay. Uh, I'm six foot four, 200 pounds, and as you can see, I, I have the seat up all the way, 
perfectly comfortable and your for head me. doesn't touch even yeah, with your I long can, hair i can even even wear a hat in here this is this is a big one right the hat okay doesn't touch so. all right very good <laughs> no that's important because some trucks uh some vehicles you just for tall people they're just not made for yeah. tall people so yeah um obviously love the 12 inch screen and I really love the LCD screen, which also is another difference between the XLT and the Lariat model is this full. What LCD screen? So all the tachometer and the speedometer and everything is 100% LED oh, or wow. LCD. Okay. So, so you get everything, oh, there we go. That is pretty cool. All right, so everything is just nice and automated. There's no, that's cool. Yeah. Probably. Oh, so you don't have the analog. I've got the analog in you my F-350. Yeah, yes. even at that price point, you'd think I would have gotten a digital screen, but I've got an analog yep. screen in there. And this is customizable too. You can add different things on there that you want, just different trips and uh, configuring your view. I leave it usually here. Okay. Um, what's also really cool, if you actually use the Ford navigation is with the LCD screen is your directions actually pop up on oh, the center here as well so you don't have to look at your main screen as long as you're using the navigation it will just put on there like right and point two of a miles and it stays on there until you make the right oh so, very cool yeah yeah we were speaking of the packages right so this is the base lariat that you can buy that's the 500 i think a package is the best thing way to describe it um so it has everything a lariat has but nothing additional Okay. Um, as you I don't even have a center console. Uh, that's something that I actually don't always like. I, like I said, taller, big guy. I like to be able to. Oh, so you actually have the seat in the middle. I have the jump seat in the middle. Oh. You still get some decent storage. Okay. Uh, underneath here. Um, See, I kind of wish I had that because I've got the console, which is nice because I get to store things in it. But yeah. I think I would rather have the seat. This moved up, especially on long trips, you know, set the cruise control and I do like to like move my legs around and whatnot. Yeah. It's, it's just beneficial. Um, and this still has pretty good storage in that you still have this back here too. Yeah. So you got some decent. Yeah, I, w I think I would have rather had this. And then you've got your cup holders right there as cup well. Holders. So I know cool. you can order some to attach down here too if you want more. Okay. Um, you also have two right back here. If you have long arms like me, you can just set something right in the back of that console and be good to go. Okay. All um, right. What else is going on in the front? Like anything remarkable or it's all just basic stuff it's at this all, point? It's all pretty basic. I do have the, I did get the upgraded BNO sound system. Oh yeah. I see the little badge right there. Yeah. Uh, Which, I mean, if you compare it to aftermarket, right? I mean, it's 600 bucks for the BNO upgraded system and that's yeah that's an easy decision to make yeah um, but other than that it has the has the standard two glove compartments yeah um, i do have heated and vented seats oh very nice that's also lariat i bet that's lariat um yeah. i did order the uh locking rear diff right here um and you have your four modes there so okay uh trailer brake got the Got the trailer anticipating I might actually tow something. Yeah. Um, does have the 360 degree camera. Yeah. With towing, are you are you at all worried about it being able to tow? What is it supposed to tow? I mean, you said you no. might you may get a trailer. Uh, I might get a trailer. So I think I think the towing capacity is about nine thousand. Okay. I don't know it exactly. It's more than what I would probably ever get. I'm looking for more of a pop up trailer. You yeah. know, something we can take off road to different places rather okay. than a an actual trailer trailer how much do you think your gas mileage will change while Ooh. towing like do you think it's going to be significant or you think it stays the uh, same i i'll have to play with that a little bit i i think it all depends on how much you can stay out of the turbos while, yeah. you're, while you're towing um i would expect it to drop to uh, i'm guessing somewhere between 10 and 15 to be honest even yeah. if you had only a 2,000 pound trailer it's gonna it's gonna tax it enough i don't know maybe with the 10 speed maybe it will be able to find a, the right gear and yeah. do a little bit better. Yeah, it'd be nice to talk again about it after you tow and see what kind yeah. of numbers you get. I towed with the old 2.7. I towed a horse, horse trailer with one horse, um, but it was a three horse trailer. So I think it was about 7,000 pounds total. And mm -hmm. 
I don't remember the gas mileage, but the the 2.7 engine, it didn't even care. Yeah, about that it. it was it, back there. Yeah, it yeah. was like, oh, go accelerate to get on the interstate for yeah. five minutes, and it's like, oh yeah, there's there's a horse trailer yeah. back there. Which is another catch that it's the gas mileage, but it's also the fact of how well are you gonna tow it? Is it gonna yeah. are you gonna feel it in the vehicle or not? Yeah. So that's and that's I, actually interesting. I will say I felt it on the braking for sure. Okay, and I think that's just you know seven thousand pound trailer on an yeah. F one fifty chassis, just you're gonna feel that a little bit. Did you have a trailer brake controller on it? No, I did not. Okay, no. so also that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the truck was in charge of all of that. All right. So that's the front. It looks like, and you've got manual gears. You can choose to go manual. You can go manual. There. Got the yeah. column shift, which I'm always a big fan of. Yeah. So, um, other than that, uh, the things that do come basic, and I don't know if you can see them on here, just on the base layer, you do have three presets for your for your seating. So myself and my wife can each set our own settings, which also sets the pedal distance and uh, all your mirrors too okay so your pedals do come out they do yep. okay telescope and telescope and back um i also do have folding mirrors mm -hmm. with this one yeah um and they you know you can always find all this all this stuff is on detail on the site but sometimes it's just easier to see it than it is to yeah try to go through the list and you got the pro trailer backup assist as well yes okay yes, that's which, pretty cool I will be interested in trying sometime. Yeah, I honest. haven't used mine either. I'm curious to set it up and see how it mm -hmm. actually uh, makes things easier or if it's complicated. Yeah, so I would I would like to do it. I'll let you know if I do it. My uncle may come out with his fishing boat. Oh, cool. I may, I may talk him into letting me tow it over to a lake and just so I can see. Yeah, see, see how, how it works. works. Yeah, so I like it. All right. Other than that, I think uh, lane keep assist, which comes on all the Ford F-150s, yeah. mirror adjust, um, all up, all down windows. Uh, well, at least they're front two are automatic yeah um yeah, right. chargers cool let's jump in the back and see what the back looks All like right. can you fit in the back i do actually so again six four six five that's where my front seat set at and i'm obviously not crammed back here okay so your front seat is that all the way back it actually is. Okay. Because yeah, it, it, automa it has the uh, easy out. So yeah. whenever you shut it off, it goes back. Okay. So. so that's the furthest it can go back. And that's you sitting in the back of it. So you're yeah. sitting behind yourself right now. Yep. Okay. And it's very, I mean, yeah, you can actually see, I mean, I. it's not probably, it's not horrible, but like, you know, if my wife was driving, and I wanted to hang out back here with the kid on a road trip. Yeah. You um, can. Can. Yep. Without too much of a problem. Yep. Um, and yeah, pretty comfortable too. Very cool. What do you do for storage back here? So, uh, well, what is this down here actually? This, we have a USB-C and USB regular, okay. and then the good old uh, 12, 12 volt. 12 volt, and then you have the- Oh, that's a cup the holder. The cup right? holders. Okay. Yep. All right. You got these- Map pockets. Mantle pockets. Uh, and since you know me, there's always <laughs> gonna be a, a hatchet or a tomahawk yeah. somewhere <laughs> Naturally. in the vehicle. Naturally. All right. So, so under seat storage? We do. Uh, the one downside of having a child seat is you can't lift oh. the one side up, so that's the only side that can go on. Because the seat has to go in the middle? It can't go on the left or the right? It can. This is where it's supposed to be safest. That's what uh. other reviews say it's safest, especially with side impacts and the glass and stuff. It, you, okay. Kids are fine in these seats. It's just safest there, in the middle. at least while they are rear facing. Okay. Very good. So, All right. Um, so you, you cannot raise that seat, but you can raise this on this side? Yes. Okay. Come on over there. So this is a Built Right Industries there. It's actually a Velcro, pretty heavy duty Velcro Moly system. Okay. And uh, so I got a bag. This is actually fairly weighted. It actually has a jump kit in it. The Oh, like a jump stop. Yeah. Yeah. So you have the jump cables and then you also have a good old. Oh, Noco. Genius. Yeah. Yep. I like it. I like that. I like that brand. I got one of those. Yeah. They hold a charge for a long time. Let me yeah. tell you, I didn't charge it for two years and it still had it still worked. 25% in there. So, yeah. um, yeah, so got that on there. Um, I, since it's still new, I haven't got everything done, but got some toe straps and some general storage. This is not the box storage that you can get for the under seats. This is just what comes standard. Okay. So there's um, another that, box storage uh, under seat thing you can get. There's another seat. I think it actually comes out further. Okay. You can actually shut in. But, All right. Yeah. Very cool. And then we got the the husky liners. Oh, I think I got the same same ones, right? No, you have the uh, you have the ultimate fit ones. These okay. are the um, severe weather or um, I can't remember what the name of them. Okay, is, but they're, they're they're still very nicely fit. They're just not the like 
precision yeah. fit. Okay, but they fit pretty good. Oh yeah, they yeah. fit nice. They're I like them. Probably a little more plasticky than yours. Yeah, yeah, it feels a little bit more plastic. I'm gonna look at the one in the front too. Yeah, they feel just a little bit more plasticky, they're but stiffer. but they're still not yeah. as bad as WeatherTech, to be honest. I think yeah. they're still a little bit more rubberized. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on. What size are your wheels and tires? These, what I believe, have? I think they are two seventy five, sixty five R eighteen. Yep. Two seventy five, sixty five R eighteen, and mud and snow rated, or what is this? Uh, Goodyear Wrangler. They should be territory because they're all terrain yeah i don't see that little emblem that uh, i see the mud and snow it does say mud and snow but it doesn't have that little three peak snowflake i yeah. wonder why they stopped using that i don't have that on mine either and they say mud and snow so because in I'm colorado wondering. you think they would come with that yeah yeah i don't know i don't I'm know what that's Tennessee, about kentucky so yeah i mean it snows here but let's face it it's yeah. not that yeah of a crisis usually. exactly more worried about the tornadoes <laughs> right and in the back so you've got some mountain bike oh, gear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got the uh, standard OEM F-150 bed mat. Okay. Very nice. Uh, How's that working out for you? Like it? I do like it. It's uh, it's much more comfortable on the knees yep. if you have to actually crawl in here. Yeah, exactly. Instead of crawling on those, that metal. Yep. All right. And uh, in the back, you've got a bike rack here. So I've seen a lot of people do the bike rack or the, the pad that hangs over your tailgate. Why don't you have that? Uh, it's kind of a personal preference, but I also have a carbon frame mountain bike yeah. and some reviews will tell you that if you're going down really rough roads, I mean, that's strong, but if you're constantly beating the same spot, it could potentially weaken the carbon. Okay. Um, that's mainly the whole reason. Okay. All right. But I like the Treywack. Uh, my wife and I have shared a car for the last two and a half years. Yeah. A Subaru and this, it worked well for when I needed to go biking. So. Okay. That's a nice tray. It doesn't look like a. Is it the. What is this? Allen? Is that a, one of the Allen. popular brands? It's a. It's one of the nicer brands that you can find on uh, Amazon. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not one of the big, like. Uh, Thule, Thule and the whatever Yakima, else not, uh, yeah. Kuwait or whatever though. Yeah. But, I mean, it was also only like, I think, $175 or something, and it works great. It's even lockable, so it's actually locked on there right now. Oh, so nobody can just take it yeah, and walk so away. Yeah, so you can't take it. And these actually are lockable too. Okay, so very nice. It looks living, solid too, but. Yeah. It, I mean, I. I don't have any You're not worried about it, it. yeah. So and I, I have a very expensive bike, so I don't worry about it. I don't think most people would. Okay, yeah, so. very cool, nice bike. Well, so why didn't you go with the Tremor? So I think the, the biggest issue I had with the Tremor was what I got for the money. Okay. I, I got, you get a lot of off-road on there, but the inside was very basic. Okay. Um, so. For so out the door price for this before any rebates and everything was fifty five thousand five hundred eighty dollars. Okay. The base tremor was around fifty one thousand, fifty two thousand, and it had the off road stuff for the tremor, but it had absolutely nothing on the inside that was ah. very likable. Okay. It had the eight inch screen, had cloth seats. It was the tremor seats, so they were nice, but there still wasn't the leather. Um, had the normal non LCD. Uh, screens with the tachometer and everything and um, in order to get all of that stuff on the F-150 Tremor you have to spend another I think it's $12,000 to get the actual leather interior the 12 inch screen you can't just a la carte like I did this yeah so this like I said I added the locking rear diff the sound system and the 360 camera the pro the pro trailer backup assist mm -hmm. that's only three things i added to the base model there okay very uh, good and so yeah i think that's really what it came down to for me so there's a difference between the tremor package in an f-350 like what i have and the tremor for the f-150 right one's yes. a package and one is a uh what trim and one's a trim okay yeah. and what's the difference so i think the f-150 is an actual trim just like the lariat's a trim so it goes like xl xlt lariat and then I believe it does Tremor, and then your Limited, or your King's Ranch Limited. Uh, I forgot the other okay. one missing in there. So, which is interesting then that it sits above Valeria, but not with any of the leather in it. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's a weird trip. <laughs> it is, and it and it if they would have been able to do olive cart per se, like yeah. I would have just added things. I think I would have been okay with it. Yeah. Um, because I was I was very firm to where my price was, and I really didn't want to go above that kind of fifty five thousand mark is where I was really trying to stay as just for monthly payments and and everything. So, um, but. I mean, in comparison, and nothing against dealerships and stuff like that. What I got for fifty-five thousand, you can barely find a XLT on a lot for fifty-five thousand. Okay. So, bang for buck, I feel like I got one of the best deals you can find. Uh, yeah. Even the salesperson I worked with was actually pretty surprised at what this came in at. And okay. We were. All right, let's get inside and drive. I want to get the decibels, see how loud it is inside, and kind of get your impressions. All right. All right, that's my first time in a 2022 F-150. All right, so as usual, guys, we got the decibel meter here, and we're gonna we're gonna capture some uh, audio from it or measure the sound in it and see exactly how loud it is. Uh, keeping in mind, I've been doing this. Uh, I'm gonna do it for my uh, camper over there. I've done it in my F-350, and we'll uh, do the same thing in here and uh, with my LMTV. Uh, all right, so what we'll do is just do a city drive and then maybe pop on the highway since it's right there. We'll get an idea of the decibels. Uh, this is us just talking right now in the car back and forth and you can see it gets about 68, 74. Uh, it's, when you're listening to it, it's super quiet in here right now, like just a very smooth ride. But I'm gonna keep quiet for a second and I get that audio with uh, just a silent car, see what that looks like. And right now we're going about nine miles per hour. I'll try to capture both the speed and the decibels at the same time here. Windows are closed, there's no AC running, and So that's about 54 at 20 miles per hour. And we're gonna actually get on the interstate. the interstate here and see what kind of sound we get. So how does it feel driving? It's very comfortable, um, very smooth. I've always liked how Fords have felt when they're driving. Yeah, um, and it shifts through all the gears fine first all the way up to 10. Yeah, I think there's a little bit, depending on how you hit your turbos, there's a little bit of whack in one or two of them, or just a little bit of the shifting, but it's also a brand new transmission, so. Okay. You gonna go on the interstate? Yeah, let's take the interstate and uh, we'll just go off on the next exit. Hopefully it's not 200 miles away. <laughs> it's not Texas, so it shouldn't be. Yeah. All right, so that was pretty fast. So those are your decibels right there. Uh, I'm gonna be quiet again for a second. So we're doing 70 down the highway right now with the interstate and decibels are at. So 67 is the highest that we recorded, which is not bad at all. And it doesn't sound loud in here. It's very smooth going down the road. Very smooth. And we are not on the smoothest of interstates. No, outside. we are not. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. I have, I, have some, I have some words for the uh, DOT of Kentucky <laughs> and Tennessee area. Fix your roads. Yes. Which is actually, you say that, but driving from Alabama, because I came through Alabama, and Alabama the roads are absolutely perfect we entered tennessee as soon as we enter tennessee there's potholes on the road the roads aren't smooth so actually very interesting but um this is good i like it i like the way it feels and this is made in uh kansas what? kansas city kansas city yeah kansas city missouri mine's made in kentucky so all right
will say that's one difference I have noticed is look at your RPMs and doing 75 RPMs below 2,000, I wouldn't say my old 2.7 was there with the six speed. I would say we were definitely above 2,000 at 75. Okay, so it seems to run way lower in the RPMs. Yeah. I mean, I can do this right now just if you want an idea. So fuel economy, that's all the combined for the last one, but let's just kind of reset it. Do a little, uh, we'll do a little cruise control here at uh, 70. So 20.5. There's a lot of small up and downs on this interstate, but see, it just kind of fluctuates. And we do have a bit of a headwind. And we're slightly going up as well. It's not completely flat. I feel like we're in a climb. We are in a bit of a climb, but I think we'll we'll kind of cycle down here in a second. I think we're coming to the top of it. All right, so that's a down, a little downhill grade. Yeah. If you ever drive through this area, you know, it's not polite to drive in the left lane, but the road's a whole lot better over here. Oh, wow, it is smooth. Alright, 22. Yeah, 22. Yeah, so this is kind of flattish and whatnot, so you can kind of see that it just kind of varies just a little bit above and below. So I would say the ideal speed where you actually get 24 to like 25 miles per gallon is somewhere between 50 and 60. I think as soon as you get above 65 is when it starts to come back down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. So when you switch, what that LCD switches when you go through your driving modes, right? Yeah, it does. It depends on which drive mode. We are in sport mode right now, which is insanely torquey. And yes. Okay, so you can tell the difference when you're accelerating in sport versus any other mode. Like it's actually different. I believe I believe it's actually different. I, if you can just feel, if you could be in here, like I just tap the gas and you can kind of like see how it like jumps a little bit. Yeah, I can see you kind of moving back as you're doing yeah. that. So, but yeah, so you can, you can do different modes and I'm sure you can do them while you're driving. We're about to find out. You also notice like at the same speed, my RPMs are higher just kind of cruising around because I think you get rid of a few of your overdrives, at least your last one. Okay. And it does shift differently, it has different shift points. Right. So if we go back, yes. okay. if you, I don't, did you want to film the? Yeah, I do. Right. So you're gonna slow down a little bit while you're doing that? Or? Yeah. So we can switch back to, now we're in sport. There's eco. You also have four-wheel automatic in sport mode, which doesn't help the fuel economy. Oh, so the colors change in the display as you're doing that. That's actually kind of nice. It's like yeah. watching a little TV screen. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And then back to normal, and then you also have, if you want to get those, we have slippery, light blue. Okay. And then we have deep snow. I like the animations. I mean, it looks... Right? really good like it's not just like janky graphics they're actually pretty good mm -hmm. if you can see in the video over on the bottom left hand screen you'll see actually when it goes into 4x4 mode and all this other th stuff automatically just by flipping the knob yep. so yep. so one thing i don't like about my truck is the camera how's the camera on yours the backup camera it's, is it I, think I call it industry standard <laughs> yes yeah. means that it's it's great for some up close detail, but once you get out a little bit further, it's not great. And you get a nice great view of my bike right there. Yeah, um, so it's not like, um, what do you, high definition. The camera is not HD. No, no. Okay. But I think, it, I think it does its purpose. I will say that I did discover that uh, I've never had a vehicle with a backup camera before, so this is my first one. Yep. This might be new, it might not be. But the sensors in the back too will tell me if a car is coming, if I have it in reverse, it'll tell me which direction, it'll have arrows on the screen showing oh, me which direction it's coming from. Okay. Um, 
which is new to me. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as I put a uh, camper topper on top of this, I won't be able to look back and see. So I think. So that's going to come in pretty handy. Come in pretty handy. So I am very happy with just the technology general package with this. It obviously has blind side, yep. the blind side assistance and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was one part that I was like, that's actually a useful piece of technology. You know, you. A lot of cars have a lot of tech in them, and it's just like, okay, well, it's nice. Yeah, but what? You know, how's that going to help me? Exactly, and I feel that, especially this model, has a good balance of nice and very functional technology. Okay, very cool. Okay, do you have the adaptive cruise control? I do not. I did not order that. Okay. Um, I just have the regular standard cruise control. Yeah, and that works out for you just fine? Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Okay. Wow, I like this. It kind of looks like it's denim, but it's not actually denim or cloth at all, is it? No, it's not. It's uh, It almost feels like a rubber type material. Or yeah. It's a plasticky rubber. It's, it's soft touch, but yeah. it's not plastic. No, I like the fact that they added that and it actually ties into the vehicle real well. I wish I had it in my F-350, but this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I like that. We should have talked about that when we were talking about the interior. This is actually pretty good your airbag system but still uh, very nicely done and you've got that on the other side as well yes yeah that's super cool well i thought we'd have an exit here hopefully we don't have to go all the way back to fort campbell <laughs> um. <laughs> so so that's the that's a 2022 lariat edition ford f-150 and i must say driving in here it feels it feels pretty smooth how much smoother than my f-350 I'm gonna say a little bit more of a car feeling in here than I get in my F350. I, I feel like it feels more, more like a car, but not drastically different where you're like, oh yeah, the F350 sucks, but uh, definitely does feel a little bit smoother. It'll be nice to have my F350 here and drive down the same stretch of road and see what that would feel like, obviously. But um, but yeah, but that's about it for right now, folks. Um, I'm hoping that the video wasn't too long here, but wanted to make sure we captured as much as possible from a new driver in a new F-150 or 2022 F-150 anyways, uh, to get his uh, driving impressions there. So, you know, thanks a lot, uh, Anytime. Dustin. I'm glad that we're actually able to make this happen. I was just actually driving through uh, Kentucky and I thought I wasn't gonna be able to catch up with him because I showed up unannounced and he <laughs> ended up not being there. He was actually out biking. So, but uh, we were able to actually get it to work out. So until then folks, peace. Adios.